He has a hereditary tendency of the most diabolical kind. The always dangerous Grand Tomb. Dancing is forbidden. And the real man behind the curtain, Sebekian. It's such a fine line between stupid and clever. Yes, she said, we'll turn about. Do not adjust your resolution. Things are about to get fun. Welcome to Des Moines. Wait, that's not how I want to start the show. Let's start. Take two here, okay? <laughs> Welcome to Tornado Ravage Des Moines, Iowa. How are we doing, you guys? Um, I'm in the studio with my regular panel of friends here. I got Grant's tomb, and actually we're joined by Dr. Evil tonight. Uh, Mr. Clean is taking the night off. Um, so Beckian could be here any moment. He... Kind of seems to be lost, missing in action. Um, hope Chasing tornadoes. Hope he's safe, yeah. Um, but we do have some studio guests with us. We have Seth Peters and BJ Forrest of Dead Horse Trauma, the hardest working band in Des Moines. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Good, man. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah. Um, I uh, I hope it's hope it's okay outside. I'm, I, I got a text from our musical guest, Jeff Banks, and he's going to try to wait out the tornado warning, so... I guess that's kind of pending at the moment, but um, you guys made it, so we're good. We can yeah, we can talk some rock and roll <laughs> on the Bigfoot Diaries live. Um, you guys are known throughout town as the hardest working band, and um, actually, I, I would even take that further. I um, I was talking to your manager Matt Miller, uh -huh. and um, he mentioned that of all the bands he works with, he's out in California. That Dead Horse Trauma is the hardest working self promoting band he's ever dealt with. And that's, that's, that's a huge compliment, you know? So what, what is your theory or what is, what is your, uh, what is your um, business model when it comes to self promotion and marketing yourselves? I think there's like a, a Midwestern theme with it really like people from the Midwest work hard to get what they want. And we kind of have that mindset. Like we work all day, every day, doing anything possible to get to the next level or get to that next goal. I mean, goal setting is important anyway. You got to figure out what you want to achieve and how you're going to get there. And that's something every band should do. They should lay it out and see, just make a plan on how you're getting there. What, what is your ultimate goal? I guess right now. Headline right, laser fest? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> to, yeah. do, to do it every day, you know, like... Yeah. We're at the point now to where it's, I, I don't think it's so much a, a label that we're interested in right. as much as right. it is just putting ourselves out there every night. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I think it's, it's come to the conclusion, uh, not only with us, but all across the, the music scene in general, that the label, the time is gone. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody, oh, yeah. you're, in my opinion, right now, the the way that we are, it, it we put ourselves, we set ourselves up, excuse me, with the worth ethic that we have and the approach that we've built to to be able to profit from what we're doing, which most bands at our level don't even get to do most mm -hmm. nights. So to, to be able to put ourselves out there and, and treat it like a business, you get what you put in at yeah. the end of the day. Sure. Yeah. Record labels are dead. They're, they're, they're done for. I mean, to be successful nowadays, I think... You have to do everything yourself or hire it out. You know, hire a good booking agent, hire a good publicist. But 
you know, the label, they were made to take, to promote your albums and they take a percentage of the proceeds. Well, those are no longer good enough for them because everybody will download it. You know, you have to have a live show now. Mm -hmm. Like you need to be on the road traveling. That's where your money's made now because out of 10 people that, that have your album, seven or eight of them probably downloaded it right but it's cool if they come to the show if you're putting on a show that they want to see mm -hmm. then you're going to get your returns anyway i mean that's just a promotional tool you have to get people in the doors to see your show and that's, that's not a problem for you guys when you guys play the people come to the show and that's that's another thing that separates you guys from other bands in the area there's a lot of incredible music in des moines but we were talking about nest of snakes earlier and how you know I went to their first show and it was really crowded at the whole Avenue tap, but I heard, you know, you guys were mentioning that since then, maybe that, you know, the crowds really aren't there all the time, you know, even though it's a great band, dead horse trauma is there and the fans represent. And that, that goes, that goes out to you guys, you know, your promotion style. Um, like I said, it comes back to marketing and, you know, the things you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So you guys do travel a lot, tour a lot. Yeah. And that's, that's what's made it easier to, to do a Des Moines show, you know, we space them out quite a bit. We mm -hmm. don't want to oversaturate the market. I mean, people see us here all the time. We don't want people to be able to say, you know, well, we'll just catch the next one, you know, and that just keeps happening. We'll catch the next one. We'll catch the next one. Right. But we're at a point, luckily enough, that we can travel around and we can hit other audiences in the market and just try to build our following wider and wider. But yeah, when we come home, people come out in full force and it's nice because we make it an event, you know, we don't do it mm -hmm. all that often. So you better come see it. And how do you do in, in cities like Minneapolis or, you know, the bigger cities, how do you guys do there? Uh, I would actually claim Minneapolis is my second home away from home. Okay. Uh, the hospitality that comes from that area is just overbearing sometimes, you know, there's so many nice people out there. Uh, the, it's an, it's another really good scene where the market, in my opinion, is just really oversaturated with talent. So you you get the opportunity to actually play with a lot of high level bands that are stuck in the same spot as you mm -hmm. all the time. I think that we've actually uh, Minneapolis is a good example because we've drawn so many friends out of that area and so many bands to be able to work with directly. And it 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 I think in in the approach in that aspect it, it works out to our advantage because you know then you get into the show trade aspect and putting yourself in a position to where we can almost go up there and guarantee a good response mm -hmm. each time that we're going up there just like we can guarantee them bringing it back yeah it's win win we just found bands that had the same kind of work ethic as us mm -hmm. and had a product that was ready to travel with and you know they come here and our fans love them here and we go up there and their fans are taking a liking to us but yeah we were just up there two nights ago and yeah the hospitality is always great like we got to hang out with all the bands that we usually play with they all come out and hang out mm -hmm. let us crash at their house nice shower you know mm -hmm. so it's it a good time man to see you know we go up there and see our friends it's pretty fun talking about that work ethic um like i said nobody does it like you guys do i was driving to oklahoma last summer i was pulled into a Casey's to go to the bathroom like in, I think it was like mid-Missouri and there's a dead horse sticker or I'm sorry, a dead horse trauma sticker on the, on the, on the hand dryer in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, man, those guys are everywhere. How yeah. does, how does that happen? Um, t talk about your work ethic, your work ethic. How, what separates you guys from the things that other bands are doing? Um, I think we try to make the, the smartest decisions we can to, to benefit our main goal, which is to get out and travel. Um, I don't know. We just worked out good relationships with bands that are drawing in other areas and also bringing a live show that talent buyers want to pick up and want to help you, you know, they want to turn you on to their city's fan base. So, I mean, that's helped a lot. It's, it's all about networking when you talk about traveling and playing shows, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It's staying in touch with everybody and, you guys are you guys are handing out flyers at other shows oh, too. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't see a lot of bands doing that. You that's guys that's huge. I mean, a lot of bands rely on Facebook now, mm -hmm. and not everybody has a Facebook. Mm -hmm. And Facebook does a really good job of snuffing out event posts. If you haven't noticed, they do. They it'll snuff it out. Like you have to hit the streets. You have to conversate with people, meet people, 
um, you know, talk to him, hand, hand him a flyer in person. You know, it's more mm -hmm. personable. It's not like I just blasted this event and invite out to 3000 people and that's going to, that'll, that'll do the trick yeah. right. out of 3000. Like what percentage would even show up? You know, even if you have 150 on your going, yeah. cut that down to like 60% of those are going to show up. Did you guys ever get final numbers on that Cedar release show? We did. I don't know off the top of my head. I, I know it was uh, 400 plus. That place was packed. It got pretty dangerous there for a while. <laughs> did it? I didn't. I oh. don't see. I'm blinded by the lights. I yes. don't see anything going on out there. Big old circle pit right in the middle of the venue. <laughs> I remember people on and off the stage continuously the entire yeah. night. So that was that was always really fun. Uh, I I would think that I would I would want to push in more on like the worth ethic aspect. And we always talk about the live show. Like the live show is looked at as a statement more or less. In my opinion, music is not only so easily made, but you can cheat the system any way you want to now with the tools that are out there that by the time it comes down to it, it doesn't take much to make a good song anymore, mm -hmm. but it takes a lot to be able to perform that song and for people mm -hmm. to get the same feeling that they do when they listen to the album. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about worth ethic, like a, another thing that goes into it is, is you almost have to practice and work how you want to be perceived. And I think sometimes that's, that's kind of the overall message that, that gets lost at, at this level of where we're at. Mm -hmm. You get to the point where you, you play shows and you almost oversaturate yourself with whether it's the routine that you put yourself in, like there's got to be a dedication factor that comes to it because not only do, does it become monotonous at the same time, but if you can't find enjoyment in it, it's going to push you away. Sure. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the social networking. I mean, obviously you guys do use that as a, as a tool. Yeah, it's a great tool. Don't get me wrong. Like it's an excellent tool, but don't rely on it a hundred percent. It's kind what of all, uh, what all social networking sites do you use? Oh, pretty much all of them. MySpace. Yeah, we we still still, still we got still, an active MySpace. We, yeah, we still get messages on MySpace. Wow, Twitter, you know, Facebook. Sure. Um, I don't think we have an Instagram yet. No. I think that might be something to look into. This the scary thing in in my opinion about the the social media aspect is sometimes you don't even have to worry about the website per se snuffing it out, but like it's human nature for us. Like we're all guilty of getting mass amounts of events and half the time just ignoring mm -hmm. you know you get so many flooding in on a day-to-day -day basis that you look through 10 and still have another 10 to float through the very mm -hmm. next day and you already have 20 on top you know we're just as guilty as the website at that point and like that's why you can't have full relying faith in the numbers that i in my opinion that you project you know you see events all the time where well and, and we see it in a lot of the shows that we play out of town, you know, where events will read 250 plus and then you get there and it's, it's not 250. Right. You, know, you, you almost question how much work's actually been done to promote the show in general at that mm -hmm. point. You got, you guys pay Facebook to promote? No, no, not at all. And I, I, I'm curious if anybody does, if, um, cause I'm on, I'm under the same boat. You know, I, I put something up on the Bigfoot Diaries Facebook page and you know, Four days later, I look at it and it says viewed by 46 people. And I'm just like, yeah. I, think, I mean, I think we have once or twice. It's, you know, uh, we make sure it's something we have to or it's a real necessity to get it to as many people as possible if it's a big event. Mm -hmm. But we usually go with the cheaper of the option. Like, we're not trying to throw away any extra money on Facebook. Or well, that's where your your street teams come in, so to speak. You know, yeah. it's, it's part of playing the music and, and being the musician and having the band is the interaction that you get with your fans. And mm -hmm. I think that I would like to think that we take that to a completely different level. Cause if you ask anybody that enjoys our music, they're going to tell you a time when they've sat down and hung out with us after we've done, uh, we've gotten done playing, you know, like we make it a point to hang out with everybody that listens to us because in turn, they're the ones that do just as much, just as much work, if not more, in some instances as we do, you yeah. know, so it's like having that availability to have, you know, yeah. 250 people, what seems like some days, you know, like ready to jump the gun to, to also be the ones that are help passing out flies or getting the message out or getting the word out, not only about the music, but the group and making sure that, uh, everybody that they have the opportunity to, like you talk about paying for Facebook, it, it almost becomes obsolete at that point because when you mm -hmm. have 250 sharing, it's like a plague. Yeah. It's a big thing. It just, trickle down it's trickle down effect something else that you know it's uh, talking about your fans i mean 
the only other band from Iowa that I can think of that has logos tattooed on them, Slipknot. You know, you've got an entire photo gallery on your Facebook page yeah. with just fan tattoos. Yeah, and that's, that's that's pretty nuts. That is crazy. Yeah, it makes it it puts things in perspective for us. Like when that started happening, like this is bigger than just the members. Like people actually are taking stake in this. They're putting it on their bodies forever. Right. That, I mean, that's pretty awe inspiring for us. You know, it's crazy that. That people do that. I mean, Does pressure awesome. come along with that? Is there pressure now? I mean, <laughs> maybe. Like, <laughs> to a degree. Maybe. Yeah, there's always been pressure in the game, so to speak. But I think the the aspect is it's like the hammer to the nail. You know, it does put the perspective that the situation that we're in is bigger than each of us yeah. individually. It, so if you can't look at it that way, you know, it, it makes it really difficult for you to get to a successful spot. It, could we could it, we ever expect the uh, Dead Horse Trauma ballad? The ballad. <laughs> the ballad. I think we had to do an acoustic song for a radio interview one time, and it yeah. really didn't go over yeah. that well. So n no, I, I, the the challenge goes back to you, Grant. Oh. If you can find the song that needs right. to become the ballad, we would even, play it. Even if we did, we would never play it live. <laughs> yeah. So never don't follow. count on that. It, it, We're not taking the tempo down that low. You can watch shows, and and when somebody whips out that ballad or even something mellow, people are like, ah, I'm gonna go grab a beer. I, was, so so dies. I yeah. was guilty of it Energy at gone. one point. You know, it's like you you go and you sit there and you watch a set that's just overbearing. You know, uh, I want to say balls to the wall. You know, like all the time, like just going and then they immediately stop it. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> Energy's <laughs> gone. And then you just see people flock. You know, it's that's a scary thing. Do I think that the ballad's a bad thing? No. Do I think that really? it's that, that it, it it works in some aspects? Make five you know, good ballads you, right now. You got <laughs> heaven isn't too far away. Uh, I could continue. <laughs> but, there, there was a metal wrong. band in the '80s or maybe early '90s, and maybe you know this, Doctor Evil. Striper. Um, they had they had a T-shirt that said something along the lines of six albums, no ballads." <laughs> and I've been trying to find that online for. Slayer? I want to say it was Exodus, maybe, or... <laughs> it's crazy. Um, it's If anybody knows that, you can call me at one 244 77 and let me know what that is, because I'm, I'm really curious as to what that is. Or if you want to just ask these guys a question, you can call in and you can talk to them, Do too. It. Make my day. That would be fun. We You'd actually be the third caller we've ever had, which is... <laughs> that's not related to me, or, you know, so... The ballad's probably out of the question, but the motto of chorus is bigger than Def Leppard will never die. Yep. Is that that's the motto? That's, that's Choruses the, that would make Def Leppard cry. Yeah. <laughs> What's Dead Horse Trauma's panty dropping song? Ooh, God, is there one? Yeah, I mean, I bet you there's twenty of them. You can still you make know. that. Head. I've seen you guys <laughs> live. <laughs> yeah. you know, I've seen you guys live. What are you basing this off? <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys have your two guitars all tuned up, and you're just like pelvic thrusting. Pelvic loves thrusting. That. You know, all those I may be spandex. guilty of a pelvic thrust every now and then. <laughs> I don't oh. always try to work it into the routine, but sometimes you got to. You oh, know? yeah, dude. You have the worst bass face ever. <laughs> <laughs> How do you see it? He looks like Cousin It most of the time. Uh, just, just, up until the haircut. Yeah, is. you flip it and like you twirl it. You do the windmills. <laughs> I got to. That's the cool thing now I hear. Yeah. Oh, I've been doing that for years. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. I had to. I actually had to lose the long hair as of recently, unfortunately. There will be no more windmills for oh, me and a lot more sweat in my eyes. Yeah. Preach it to the choir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have real jobs also then. You're not just you're not um, just working. Unfortunately, yes. yes. Yeah. Currently we still have day jobs. But hopefully soon. I mean we're trying to figure out the next move is really crucial for us. How to not go completely broke in the next year trying to get to the next level, which the next level is funding our families off of this business we've mm -hmm. created. And that's the ultimate goal for any musician is sure. to fund your life off of this and it's there's a lot of crucial crucial decisions and moves that have to be made for it to work right like all the pieces have to fall in line just perfectly so yeah unfortunately we still you know we we're lucky enough that we can take off work for you know periods of time like we'll go out for a week or something like that with if we do like a national thing and your jobs are cool with that yeah you understand yeah. that yeah yeah for the most part well taylor <laughs> taylor owns his own tattoo shop not that that means he can just not work, right? But you know he's he can check out, so that's that's cool. Um, what does Taylor do in the band? Taylor's our keyboardist, sampleist, and he does some backing vocals. 
If necessary, would you guys relocate to a different state for better odds? I wouldn't. I don't think that relocation's a necessity at this point. I think that where we're at now, the the hump, so to speak, is the, the really the, the plan of attack. You know, we've sat down and had a couple of ideas. Uh, relocation hasn't been the aspect that would would actually put us out to where we need to be. I think it's more of just the 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 planning aspect, not even so much the the funding, so to speak, but making sure that it's set up to where you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, if you're trying to get on a record label, then yeah, maybe relocating is best because A and R reps don't travel to see you. They're not going. They're going to go to the Sunset Strip and they're going to check out the bands playing the Strip. So they're not funding you know trips for A and R reps to go all over the country and check out bands anymore. It just doesn't happen. For where we're at, trying to fund it ourselves. Iowa is a relatively cheap cost of living state. Like it's not terrible. You go to LA, you would lose everything. I think for us, you know, but, uh, trying to be self-sustaining, it's perfect. You're right in the middle of the country. You know, if you start on the West coast and you got a stopping part right in the middle and then you work your way out to the East, I've seen a lot of nationals move to the Midwest because of this. Right. Well, hey, uh, we are at the 20 minute mark. We're going to take a small break here, a couple minutes and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about. The ridiculous amount of sub genres <laughs> associated with heavy metal music. Um, cool. We're gonna try to label. We're, we're gonna try to name as many as we can and put a label on them and what the, what the, uh, maybe offer an example of each. Yeah. So somebody call in and tell us what sub genre we are. That, that'd be fantastic. That would be, that I already would be know awesome. the answer to this. And uh, Turtle Boy, <laughs> if you're watching, we'd love to have you call in because I know you are the you are the reigning expert on sub genre <laughs> heavy metal music. So we'll break off for a commercial and we'll be right back on the Bigfoot Diaries live. Good job, you guys. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. Well, hi, I'm Rob Spearman. I'm a broker owner of REMAX Real Estate Concepts in Des Moines, Iowa. Give us a call if you're looking at buying or selling a home, or if you're having trouble on your mortgage payments or looking to purchase foreclosures, we have the agents to help you, experienced, outstanding agents. Our office number is 515-276-2872. Or if you'd like to look at homes, go to our website, homeconnectusa.com. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome back to the Bigfoot Diaries Live. Um, that is the Ma Cora that you're hearing as we break into the intro here. Not a good local band. Um, I'm going to read my Facebook page here. It says, uh, your show sucks. Wait, what? Hold on. <laughs> For real? No, I'm just oh. kidding. We're going to talk some subgenres with these guys. Um, heavy metal music has more subgenres than any other genre yeah. of music that I could ever come up with. And it seems like just in the last few years, it got flooded. I mean, there was, <laughs> when I, when I grew up, you know, in a, 
I, okay, this is this is how I remember when I, I was in I was in high school in the eighties. Okay, and we were we were riding the Scorpions and um, Molly Hatchet on our on our <laughs> school PGs, you know. <laughs> and I remember my my friend Sean was asked, you know, what kind of music do you like? And he said heavy metal. And I'm, I'm like, what the heck is that? He's like, you know, the Who and you know, I mean, I mean stuff that was really heavy at the time, you know. Yeah. Then. You know, I listened to some Judas Priest, which I could, I could I could kind of put that into the heavy metal thing, Iron Maiden, that kind of you know, but it's still almost all radio friendly. Then I saw Megadeth live, you know, in, in 1989, 1988, when they opened up for Alice Cooper here at Betts Auditorium, and that changed everything. You know, and that was, that was my first introduction to speed metal. But then after that, Judas Priest came out with an album that was also pretty fast, and so okay, I thought okay, now there's a new genre of music there called speed metal. I I can get that move ahead to 2012, 2013, and now there's there's probably yeah. at least 25, 30. The heavy metal page on Wikipedia is pretty funny to run through. <laughs> um, so I guess what would you label Dead Horse Trauma? If you if you had to put a subgenre on it, what would you call Post it? Post-hardcore, jank, grind, death, fartcore. Stoner. No, I don't know. I Viking. <laughs> goblin label just pigeonhole you like a genre itself just pigeonholes you into the idea that you need to sound like this like whatever sounds good to us is what we are i guess yeah i first i first noticed this uh back when i was in high school and when you would go to buy cds didn't uh you would see stickers on these cds for fans of you know and a lot of times it was like the same three bands slayer you know lamb of god and, and then you actually listen to it doesn't sound anything like those bands the thing about the subgenre thing, it's it's trying to differentiate itself from what came before it. But the problem is, is it gets so muddled down there. I, a lot of bands that are walking around here, and I'm not going to name them, but you know who you are. <laughs> they'll they'll call themselves Gent. Is that how you pronounce it? It's it's spelled D J E N T. I don't even know how to pronounce it. What are you looking at me for? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing: that whole term came about. They were interviewing one of the guitar players from Meshuga who kind of coined this term as a joke. Somebody in a foreign uh, interview asked him, how do you describe your sound to people who have never heard it? Well, it's kind of like, gin, 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 gin. And these little kids ran with it. <laughs> That's onomatopoeia. You it's have an a style, onomatopoeia. Yeah, exactly. You have a style called walk when you use, Jump. like, Metallica, Kurt, Womit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the overuse of the wah pedal. Circa 1990 to uh, present. Correct. <laughs> you win a beer. Does anybody know Metallica's first bass player? Ron McGovney? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was hoping somebody would call in. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, caller. I don't think anybody in my family knows that. So. <laughs> Be right with the muddling down effect. I watched this uh, this interview with Phil Anselmo, and he was at some college, I think, in Louisiana. Yep. It's an awesome, awesome like speech that he gives, but he talks about one part where bands nowadays – take the two bands that they like the best and they rip them off and like back in their day you'd take like the 10 bands that you liked and rip them off and that's kind of where you got a more original sound because you're drawing from more than like two simple ideas you get 10 different things that are pulling you 10 different ways and it creates your own distinct kind of feeling and that's why nobody remembers the power metal or the glam rock that uh <laughs> pantera used to do yeah exactly they were a glam exactly. band and there are some hilarious photos of vinnie paul uh the the kiss era pantera uh, kiss era yep. oh Spandex. yeah makeupless when they were produced <laughs> glitter feathered hair Dayglo. everybody went through that phase though now yeah we went through that phase last do you guys night. wear guy liner <laughs> no. do you guys wear stretchy pants yeah no Stretchy pants. Revealing no. clothing. I I mean, I ha I do have tight pants, if that's what you're asking. And yes, there are days that you may or may not be able to see my junk. But I mean, that's for yeah. that's a different topic. You We're can't not. see it, but he's wearing capris right now. I, why, yeah. why do you ask, Dr. Evil? Why not? Okay, just curious. They'll um, flatter me over there. What are you trying to say? Well, like, <laughs> sex sells. It does. Yeah. Yes, but it does. We, Booty shaking. We would not be in that classification. If you're asking if there always needs to be a pretty one in the band, yeah. Yeah, I mean, sure. Yeah. You sure. guys went last in death metal. You're too good looking. <laughs> Maybe that's why all the death metal bands hate us. Yeah. You guys We've been are lumped on with looking. them and they're like, this is just like that's that's where we're the ballad. Oh, yeah. We're on a death grind core show and everybody's looking at us like What's we're uh like Bon Jovi or Def <laughs> Leppard. Why are there yeah. songs over two minutes? Yeah. yeah. You guys don't start a song with a grunt, do you? No. Uh, no, unfortunately. Or, or four snare pops. <laughs> tap, 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 blast. Right. 
<laughs> we don't even. It cracks me up because I, I was just listening to a record the other day and I was just thinking the same thing. How many times in my life have I heard that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what is it? What is the definition of grindcore? Oh, you know, Grand. it's, it's yeah. grind. And, and well, first of all, maybe maybe you. You watching at home knows this, and if you want to come in or call in, and well, come in too if you want to. Um, I, I think grindcore came about. I mean, it was a fusion of hardcore, and it was kind of a, a proverbial middle finger to a lot of the glam rock that was going on. I mean, you want to look at the everybody calls Napalm Death the founders, or not necessarily the founders, but maybe the Godfathers of grindcore. And when they started out, they were taking kind of the hardcore punk influence from the states, and they were cutting out the filler. There were no guitar solos. You know, it was maybe a minute half song um one of my favorite napalm death songs is about four minutes and it literally is just a grunt but the fact that they were able to actually draw crowds in for that kind of music pretty amazing i don't think you can put a definition on that it, it, the definition is the name itself it's grindy grindcore they write a lot about maggots urine yeah death. ugly things death. Death. blood death. dying death things fig, like it's in my instance, that uh, when I think of a lot of decent grindcore bands out there, it's the punch factor. It's the in your face. I oh, only have yeah. to be here for 45 seconds. And then it's we're already rolling into three other tracks, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it still puts you in a position to where like it reminds me. I think of grindcore and then I immediately get put under the topic of math metal at that point. You know, it's like you run into grind. You can't understand the vocals and then. Grindcore branches out, and then you have math metal, and nobody understands the time signatures. You have 15 different parts layered on top of each other. Everybody's playing in their own format, but what, it works. What's the producer saying? Uh, she's asking me to quit breathing heavily into the microphone. Is she really? <laughs> <laughs> that turn so you let's on? Let's talk about grindcore, I guess. Um, <laughs> grindcore. Gets, gets I'm a little steamy Let's also. talk about progressive rock and metal. Let's talk about it. I was just kidding. This is oh, no, I'm not, I'm not this kidding. This is your area right. of expertise. This is my era of expertise. Okay, progressive rock and metal. You know, starting off with the '70s prog rock, where everybody just gets stupid with their instruments. Who's, they, a, who's the first prog rock band in your opinion? Uh, Chicago. Yes. No, I mean yes. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? See what I did there? Yeah. No, the band. Yes. The band. Wait, I think you got it. Yeah. No, they had no? that song about that fish. <laughs> yes. Yeah, correct. Yes. <laughs> yes, the band. <laughs> yes. Screw right it. Turn. Jethro right? Tull. No. Wait. <laughs> King of Crimson. Jethro Tull. ELP. Okay, now you're you're stepping out of the metal thing. Well, are we still talking but, about metal? What are we talking yes, about? Yes, we are. We're talking about progressive rock, and okay. we're moving into progressive metal. Okay. So people that are good at their instruments, they get stupid with it. They want to write 15, 8 time signatures. That's like 15 notes on top of an 8 count. It's just like, you know, you can like... Count those 15 notes, walk and get a beverage and come back and just start over. You know, that's the next measure. Now, not a lot of people have like keyboards in their bands because that's not cool. Well, these guys have a keyboard. They're pretty good keyboards, actually. But, you know, it's like the run of the mill, the Metallica factor of just four chuckle headed, you know, Cro Magnum brow guys <laughs> with long hair. They don't shower. They no, don't need no, no, no sissy keyboards or any stuff like that. Metal elitists. Is the term that they like. I just thought metal in. mongoloids. I mean, metal <laughs> elitist. I think someone was like, I've heard of this band, and because I have and you haven't, that's an elitist move, you know? Yeah, that's, that's very true. true. So it's it, kind of like a hipster thing, too, you know? Ooh. Like, that's, yeah, like, like heavy me metal hipsters. Heavy metal hipsters. There's, there's, okay, this is a little <laughs> off subject here, but I gotta throw this out here. A friend of mine posted up on Facebook. Um, this company that basically pulls restaurants nationwide um, released a uh, statement about the rising prices of beer in New York City. They blame it solely on Pabst Blue Ribbon. I, I am not that. joking. PBR, professional bar writing. Go go to that. What's that bar downtown? They they base their drink prices on a on a market level. The exchange. Yeah, the exchange. Yeah. Exchange. Go see what PBR is. I yeah. bet it's the highest beer in there. Huh? Actually, oh, it's eight dollars for a PBR. It's it's oh. like six bucks for a shot of water. So <laughs> <laughs> this is Des Moines. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't drink the Iowa. Don't drink the Iowa yeah. City water. We want to be Chicago. We get off pretty pretty lucky here. We yes. played a Friday where we played. It was six dollars for a bottle of Bud Light. Bucks for a domestic. Teacher. Good Lord, Felicia Rashad. And that was like what Bud Light? Yeah, that was domestic. No, thank you. Six dollars. Yeah. Jeez. Oh. 
What can you do for six dollars here? Get into a show. Yeah. yeah. Precisely. Two, Most, yeah. two <laughs> gallons of milk. I, not change. two. One and a half. <laughs> milk went up. Nine ears of corn. I had to throw that in there. It's corn. Yeah. Stuff. It is. Corn Corn's season. expensive in Iowa, which makes no sense. <laughs> Unless it's May. Probably because we're importing it from other states. Yes. Right. <laughs> hey, Wisconsin gets their cheese from engineered. Pella. So. so what is the difference between doom metal and death metal? Oh, doom. It's the tempo. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's slower. The tempo, the tuning, yeah. the, I was going to say, death the metal, theatrics. Death yeah. Death metal's kind of become an all-encompassing um subgenre almost like heavy metal used to be uh i mean death metal you could have black dahlia murder or you could have you know let say the red cord completely opposite ends of the spectrum as far as sonics and uh what they sound like but they could still both be called death metal Long. you know doom is a very very specific thing um a band that i just recently started getting into is called cathedral yeah slow slow and i'm talking like slower than typo negative it is just do strippers strip to candle mass and cathedral like they do to typo negative. They'd probably make more money. They just double time it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe make triple more money. time it. That's Longer not songs. Bad, it's not a bad outlook on it. Work harder, not smarter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they want to retire. Okay, I'm out of questions. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Let's move on to, what? okay, thrash and power metal. Okay, oh. sounds good. Let's do How that. about two subgenres of speed metal? Okay. What, what's speed metal, though? I don't so, know much about this. Skank beats, 16th notes. That's all you need. So, did you say skank beats? Ska punk. Skank. Oh. You got you to gotta put the areas of the globe in if you're going to throw out thrash. Oh, yeah. Because it's not just thrash at that point. Right. You've got bear. Geography. You, you know, yeah, it, the... it becomes a very, very big definition in the genre itself. Yeah. There are, I don't know. It's, it's, you have Bay Area. Every time I think of Bay Area, all I think of is Exodus. Metallica. Yeah. Metallica. Yeah. Uh, so where, Testament. Do, where does that 80s, Anthrax. where does that 80s heavy metal come into factor? I mean, is that even in the heavy metal genre well, didn't they, anymore? Didn't they call that the new wave of British heavy metal? Well, That's you, bands like Samson, Iron Maiden, Thin right. Lizzy. Yeah. I mean, is that still metal by today's standards? Oh, or completely. Yeah, you know, okay. I, there's yeah. still harmonized guitar parts. Metal is another so, I mean, I still think all encompassing. Yeah. Metal. Yeah. Well, John Sykes and uh, Gary Moore, you know, they were a great team together. Scott Gorham as well. I don't I don't think you could ever accuse Iron Maiden of not being heavy. Yeah. They kind of I mean, you you listen to a lot of, you know, at the turn of the the 2001 rolled around. I mean, what was riding high at the time? It was new metal, <laughs> you know, but 2001 rolled around and Killswitch Engage released uh, a live or just breathing. And that record pretty much took all those elements of, you know, the new wave of British uh, heavy metal, Iron Maiden, um, pretty much Iron Maiden, really, uh, just the chugging of the uh, guitars. And then they fused that with that hardcore punk sound of it, and that's where that metalcore came from. But they really took that, that twin guitar harmony thing that you were talking about and brought it back into mainstream popularity. Uh, we had been so dumbed down, I mean... You remember Unloco? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've seen them at Harry Mary's. Did you? Yeah, okay. So, be, you know, like all these bands that were huge back in, you know, the, the 90s and even the early 2000s, they aren't selling like they used to be. No, not Corn had to go dubstep. <laughs> no. Well, they had to reunite as a an original band before oh, yeah. they'll start to make money again. But Yeah. They got head back. They're doing it good. Yeah, now. he's back. Is yeah. he the guy who found Jesus? Yeah, that's yes. the one. Jesus. Well, good for him. Well, then his pockets ran a little thin. He was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm not Screw making Jesus. Money. I'm going back to court. <laughs> okay. Maybe opening a missionary was a terrible idea. <laughs> Any Halford fans in the room? Big, you big Halford? What do no. you think about him being on the uh, Five Finger Death Punch single? Oh. What do you think about that? Low blow. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a true statement. That's You don't well, think there was an exchange of money, do you? Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't bother me because as a Halford solo fan and one of my bass influences from Davenport, now in Arizona, played with Halford. I mean, I think he's just kind of bored with metal. I think he needs a break. And, like, maybe it's good publicity for him. It doesn't really bother me. I mean, Volbeat just did a song with King Diamond, so yeah. that's, like, yeah. up yours, America. <laughs> <laughs> you know, both are from Denmark, and it's like, you know... Tell you the truth, I remember when Volbeat was a lot better under the radar, just like Lacuna Coil, and then they they hit their uh, 
Jägermeister yeah. sponsorship. Oh, yeah. They're monster endorsements, coffin cases. Everybody loves them. Then the music's different. Do you think In Flames was the same way? Correct. After uh, Reroute to Remain. I would agree with you there. I thought Reroute was a good breakthrough. But after that, I just thought they just catered to the, you know, Dr. Seuss clothes oh, wearing yeah. Hot Topic kids. Yeah. The, you know, the market, so to speak. You know, everybody gets bit by the devil at that point. Some people overextend themselves. They start getting bills they can't afford, and they're like, "How do I, how do I get out of here?" And the producers are like, "I'll we tell have, you how. We Listen have to an me." <laughs> right. I start if you screw this up, I will blow you guys up. <laughs> <laughs> you know about about Rob Halford being on that uh, Five Finger Death Punch, which that's got to be probably the worst band name Ooh, ever. It's catchy, though. That is just so Ooh, stupid. It's catchy. It's a Bruce Lee movie, but I believe. Is, uh, it, yeah. is, it, is it that or is it uh, Kill Bill? It, yeah, wasn't it the 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 move and the kill bill. Pretty sure movie. it's Bruce Lee. I don't know. Callers call in. Yeah, where you guys? Uma Thurman, are you watching? <laughs> I think that Robert Carradine. Oh, I will tell you though. I do think that Rob Halford will be due for a new solo album after this. Whole no, role. I'll disagree. <laughs> the they, last one was. You know it's coming though. I mean, you put your face out there with Five Finger Death yeah. Punch and you someone's going to top. If anything, he could do another band like Fight or Two. I'd be just as fine, you know, his <laughs> other uh, solo so endeavors. Is Judas Priest done then? Or? No. Probably just not. So that's it. what he's probably, he's probably laying groundwork for maybe a new Judas yeah, Priest. And then he's going to go on the festival circuit. I believe they're done touring. I don't know. They say one thing, they do another. I remember how many times back in the 90s, Ozzy retired and unretired and retired and unretired. And then, oh. you well, know. Didn't KK Downing drop out? He did. They have a replacement now. Yeah. Which to me, that's. It doesn't he was, bother me. He was the face of Judas Priest when I was in high school. Maybe back when, but I always thought Glenn Tipton always like he did most of the more phenomenal stuff, and you know it, it wasn't that cool losing KK. But I think it'd be an even bigger blow to lose Scott Travis on drums. In which, even though like they're not known for the drum work, what you were talking about. 1992 when Painkiller came out and it changed speed metal, you know, he's mm -hmm. kind of the core reason why that album was what it was. Having the drummer of Racer X take over like that. Well, you lose those two and you might as well call yourself Slayer at that point. I yeah. Mean, I didn't, I didn't mean, I had to be the person well, to Slayer. throw it out there. But. They've had a lot of lineup changes too, you know, Paul Bostaff. Uh, Probably their best drummer. Who else? Uh, Dave Lombardo. Didn't they like fire him or something? Yeah, Dave, I yeah. think they pretty much just told him not to come back. Well, I think he discovered a little funky accounting practices, and he called them on it, and that was the end of that. Yeah, or wasn't it the whole uh, Kerry King? You know, but there's okay. You know what? This is the guy who's quit the band twice now. True. And you know, that, where do you have room to speak at that point? Yeah, he kind of he probably lost some of his credibility. Yeah. yeah, well, not credibility, well, no, but opinion, standing in yeah. the band. <laughs> I mean, it's always been the Kerry King show, even though Hanneman, rest in peace, wrote all the good stuff. Right. I never understood that either. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a short break here, and uh, we're going to resume this awesome conversation when we get back. Right. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. <laughs> Well, good morning. This is the 7th of June in the Lord's year 2010, and this is day uno, one, uh, webcast1live.com. We will begin with Max World Live with my special guest, Tom Coates, in just a minute. There's Tom. Wait. Howdy. And uh, we will be live for the very first time on Webcast One Live. Someday we're going to look back on this and say, gosh, remember that old day in history? Wonder where Walter Cronkite was. He must have been around hanging there too. But actually, it's the beginning of Webcast One Live. And thank you for listening. Thanks, Rob Spearman and everybody who's put together this project together. And uh, we're ready to go live now. So thanks for listening to MaxWorldLive.com.
can tell you that it's going real well from time to time, but it is going. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. Well, hi, I'm Rob Spearman. I'm a broker owner of REMAX Real Estate Concepts in Des Moines, Iowa. Give us a call if you're looking at buying or selling a home, or if you're having trouble on your mortgage payments or looking to purchase foreclosures, we have the agents to help you, experienced, outstanding agents. Our office number is 515-276-2872. Or if you'd like to look at homes, go to our website, homeconnectusa.com. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Nope. <laughs> right. yeah, let me crank it up. Wait, let me put it in yours. Let me stick it in your hole. There it is. We are back in this. We are back live in the studio here at the Bigfoot Diaries live, and we are sitting here with Seth Peters and BJ Forrest of Dead Horse Trauma. We're talking heavy metal music and genres. Um, there has been a a side note for the show. Jeff Banks will not make it in tonight. Uh, he was going to be our musical guest, um, but the tornado warnings and everything else, he didn't feel safe leaving his family at home, which is total understandable. We will reschedule and get him on. And if you guys haven't heard him play, he will seriously just blow you away. He is incredible. Um, so back to the conversation, we're talking about sub genres, genres, heavy metal in general. We're talking about bands which fall under different labels. What, um, where do we, where do we break at? What were we talking about? KK Downing. KK Downing. Okay. Um, it looks like we have turtle boy, one of our writers. He's going to be, he is actually on hold here. Let me see if I can do this right. Turtle Boy will be our fourth caller ever, I believe. <laughs> can we send him a gift card? Turtle Boy, can you hear me? Bark twice if you're in California. Oh, hold on. Turtle Boy, can you hear me? Uh, hey. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, everybody? How you doing? Hello. Fine. Are you Are you watching us live on the on the internet? Yeah, yeah, I am actually. Are we Are we getting anything right? As far as yeah. genres and subgenres. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. I've always kind of touted you as the king just because you always, well, when you write your articles, there's just, it's, it's almost, okay, I'm old, I'm old, okay? I'm just going to put it out there. I'm, I'm much older than most of these guys. And, uh, You're old, you fart dust. I get lost. I get lost in the article because I'm trying to, I'm trying to wrap my head around all these different descriptions of music. Is that so the Google things? Um, <laughs> Wikipedia. So what exactly do we, do we get? right and what did we get wrong or you know or is there, anything, is there anything else that we should talk about uh well did you guys talk about black metal already uh no we haven't oh, talked about black, black metal. metal christ punching <laughs> black metal <laughs> the, the, the the kind that makes you want to chop up your best friend after you just got done playing yeah, a show and cook him <laughs> burn some churches down Euronymous, <laughs> eponymous 
Hippopotamus, one of those you're, three. Euronymous, Euronymous. Euronymous. <laughs> Euronymous. <laughs> Dummy burger. Oh, yeah. no, man. Grant holds the hip about. stuff. We're talking <laughs> like... <laughs> I only know Hot Topic Black Metal. Yes, he does. He does not know the end records or what's another good Black Metal know. label? Atlantic. Uh, Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Road Atlantic. <laughs> Motown. Warner. That's really Black Metal in Motown. <laughs> Turtle Boy, who's, and, and be careful here, please. We are live on the air. Um, yeah, 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 who, who's your favorite cool. Black Metal band? Black Metal? I would have to say Gorgoroth. Who? Gorgoroth. Gorgoroth. Definitely Gorgoroth. That's the story behind them. The fact that they're still active and they're still kind of scary, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And their makeup runs. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, dude. What's a band I like? Arcturus. They're more avant-garde black. What? Yeah. yeah. Did you just <laughs> name a place in Mordor? Where are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> rock? Just turn it over. Do I need to like school you Joey. guys on black and white metal? Yeah, there's also white metal. What is white? Yeah, metal? Like, uh, like well, Christian if you go down, there's up uh, Christian black metal. No, yeah, Christian, that's what it is. Yeah, no. Christian, mm -hmm. no, Christian black metal. That sounds terrible. I don't that's even. That's like quiet riot. It's you know. <laughs> quiet oxymoron. Riot? Oxymoron. <laughs> Did you say it's like quiet riot? Yeah, oxymoron. Okay. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah. A song about slaughtering the devil. That just, that doesn't sound cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, go, go back and listen to those uh, first two Under Oath EPs. They were legitimately black metal. You're saying Striper No, no, cool. no, 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 no. Oh, I disagree as well. I disagree as well. <laughs> oh, God. You guys think a Striper. What about Sinbreed? What about, what's another one? Dark Water. Petra. Seventh Wonder. Petra. The Res Band. Petra. Did we really get on Jeez, this top? You really are <laughs> old. Petra? Kiss, Kiss sang God Gave Rock and Roll to You. I know, what a horrible cover, right? <laughs> and it's God Gave Rock and Roll to You too. Career mistake number seven for yeah, the Yeah, that was right. on the movie, Bill and Ted's Bogus Movie. Hey, I almost bought that CD for $1. I totally did it. Oh. <laughs> you wouldn't buy it for a dollar. I wouldn't buy it for a dollar. <laughs> so, Turtle Boy, you, you recently, I think it was this last weekend, you went and saw Napalm Death and Cannibal Corpse. Is that right? Yes, I did. I'm sorry I haven't done a review on it. Oh, that's good. I, I'm, I know you will, and I look forward to it. Um, was that the Decibel Magazine tour? Yes, yes, it is exactly. Um, I believe Day Pump's doing a, a show there, right, in this yeah. month? Yeah, I think at Woolies, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to that. I've got tickets. <laughs> i got tickets to the show. Just hang I out with me. I recommend all you guys go. I recommend everyone go. Take your mom, take your dad, your grandma, your, your kids. <laughs> mom would love to it. Napalm Death? Oh, yeah. To right. Napalm Death. My dad would be all about yeah. that, too. Yeah, I'm sure my dad would. I'm sure my parents would ground me after that. So. <laughs> hey, Turtle Boy. Hey, Turtle Boy. Napalm yeah. Death, at our show, we have a local group here called Agronex. They're a black metal group. They're hilarious, but <laughs> they actually put on a good show. I don't know if you've heard of Agonex. Joby's asking you out on a date right now. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, I got tickets. You think I'd take your pretty boy? You're too good looking for this show. We only want uggos at this I'll show. I'll put guy liner on. It'll be okay. <laughs> Turtle boy, um, I'm in the studio here with Dead Horse Trauma, and I am going to get a CD from them and send it out to you and let you review it because your opinion really matters to me. And I, I mean, the way I met Turtle Boy is strange. I, I was actually on a punk rock photographer's website and I saw this photograph of her in the backyard of her of some party or something and there's all these pictures of uh, you know Bad Religion and I think um, you know just several punk bands even like Red Hot Chili Peppers were there and some other people then all of a sudden there's this little kid <laughs> and I'm like and I'm like who is this guy you know and so he was tagged as uh, Pablo Vargas on the Facebook oh, so I contacted, him. Name? I contacted him and he uh, he's agreed to write for the site which is you know and but you you grew up a punk fan, is that right? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, that was actually at a Ramones convention. A Ramones convention, okay. Yes, at um, it was like Johnny Ramones, where Didi Ramones buried. Yeah, it was, okay. Yeah, it was actually a Ramones convention, and I, I just took a picture with her because you know I love her pictures, what she did with the germs and the Clash and the Sex Pistols. Yeah, we were actually just, I had I had a buddy over this weekend, and we were looking through her book, and I was I was um, kind of geeking out on it because there, there are some awesome photos in there of. Uh, Darby Crash or some other, you know, like you said, the germs yeah. or whatnot. So, but hey, bro, I'm going to let you go because for the first time ever, we have a second caller oh, that's cool, online. Oh, um, Mom? And we're going to, in the future, we're going to figure out how we get, can get you to Skype live with us and be on the show, you know, permanent with us and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, for sure, man, for sure. But uh, I really enjoyed talking to you and I'm glad you called in and I'll touch yes. base with you later. Okay, buddy? I love it. And hey, guys, thank you for everything. I'm going to get you a Dead Horse Trauma CD and I'll send it out to you. 
Okay. Right, for sure. All right, man. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye. All right. Later. Deuces. <laughs> All right. We're going to go to uh, Snyder, and I... We're gonna hey, go. how's, it, how's it going, folks? It's Snyder. What's up? Hey, Snyder. How you doing? Where are Not you? Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Kentucky right Kentucky. now. What are you doing in Kentucky? Oh, I'm driving truck, man. What you got in the back of that 18-wheeler? You got the <laughs> best Kentucky <laughs> bourbon ever. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a question. We're gonna play the uh, lifeboat game. I'm gonna name four bands. Only three of them can survive on the lifeboat. One of them's gotta drown. Oh, I want to know which one you would pick. I'm ready for this. Pick wisely. All right. So we got Pantera, we got Sabbath, Maiden, and Metallica. <laughs> easy. All four oh, geez. Were very easy. Easy for me. Too. You know. Yeah, it's easy for me. Yeah. Too. Snyder, I'm gonna level with you. I'm a I've been a Metallica fan circa 1982 to 1988 for all my life, so I would have to bury Sabbath. You know, I I enjoy Ozzy, but uh, there's a time and, there's a time and a place, and I think that time is already surpassed. And I wasn't in, pleased by any means with the new album, so I think that Sabbath would be my choice. Burn the heretic. But what they did. What they did for metal and how they brought it to the forefront, though. I mean, you just are you going to argue with me right now, Snyder, Dude, that Metallica yeah. oh. didn't <laughs> didn't drive <laughs> America's image of metal straight to the ground? <laughs> is, yeah, is, is Pantera yeah. out of the question? Oh, no, I will never. Never. Yeah. never. Now, no, Pantera I mean, is that glam terror including? Because I love that stuff. Because <laughs> yeah. hard ride with me. I met Rex Brown at, at a meet and greet here in Des Moines, and I thought the guy was a douchebag, man. Was that it with uh, Kill Devil Hill? Yes. Okay. Vinnie Paul was cool, well, but... Did you meet Mark Zavon? Because he's from my hood. He's a sweet guitarist. He's from a Jersey system. He also played, believe it or not, the guy from Kill Devil Hill on guitar played with Rat and Stephen Piercy. Now, that's kind of... That must have been one hell of a paycheck because JRZ system is really... It's pretty much like Steve I. Satriani music, you know, based out of Omaha, Nebraska. Now, uh... I guess that's all I have, but... <laughs> Are you still there, Snyder? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm tossing so, maybe. No, I can kind of agree that Rex is kind of a jerk because I saw him at uh, playing with Down at the Ranch Bowl in Omaha. Mm -hmm. There was no security, so they let everybody just come up on stage and stage dive. It was a big old party, and they just said, respect the people with the instrument. Some guy came up on stage, put his arm around Rex. Rex turned around and popped the dude in the head, threw him off the stage. It was Meth awesome. does some crazy stuff. Yeah. You know, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of like that though. You know, um, what year was that? Ranch that, Bowl days. That was back when I had hair. <laughs> that had to have been like probably 2002, maybe. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I had hair. I would say. So that was before yeah. Dime Bag then. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Like yep. 2004. Yep. Okay, so let's it go. Was let's right go. After the the second album came out after Bustle in Your Hedgerow came right. out. And it was a killer show, one of the best shows I've ever seen. Yeah. The Ranch Bowl had some awesome shows. That's an awesome uh, album too. Okay, we're gonna go around the we're gonna go around the board here and everybody's gonna say who they're gonna throw off the boat. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna toss Pantera. Oh, what? Yeah. That's I like I love Maiden. Um, even Metallica, I've I've seen them like five times and each time I always go in there with low expectations and it, whenever I walk out I'm just blown away. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's I can't guarantee that'll be the same way the next time you see him. Well, probably not. <laughs> in fact I saw I saw is it down open up for him last time I think yeah. they were in yeah, L Fargo. Yeah, the and arena. I thought that was, I thought it was horrible. <laughs> I heard down was terrible on Yeah, that the, the sound was awful and more like down syndrome, right? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> not that it's not that it's a bad thing. Don't worry, the PC police aren't listening. I'm evil. <laughs> oh, man. So who, who do you got, Dr. Evil? All right. I'm going to toss bro Talica. Okay. And Metallica fans are the most annoyingest fans at metal shows, <laughs> saying how superior they are. And I'll tell you what. What you know, about Slayer fans? You ever met a humble Slayer fan? <laughs> There's not one. They're bleeding. They smell. Constantly. I never talk to them, so... <laughs> But Black Sabbath having all those good singers, you know, from, you know, Dio, Ian Gillen, Ray Gillen, Glenn Hughes, Tony Martin years, you know. Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, that forced. guy? Who do you got, Grant? <laughs> who, who you throwing off the boat? It's got to be Metallica. You know, I and I am a self-professed saint anger lover, but, uh, man, it's I tell you what, crazy. Lulu just, that flushed it for me. And I, I can't stand, who's, who's that other guy, Lou Reed? Yeah. Oh, I hate, I hate him, too. 
Is he the table or was James Hetfield the table? I forget. James Hetfield was the table. Yeah, he he is. He is the table. I'm sticking with my answer. I'm flushing Sabbath. (laughs) They're gone. I'm getting rid of them. Who do you got, Seth? Uh, Iron Maiden for sure. Wow. Just because I hate Gallops. He's, yeah, he's not a. <laughs> what a diverse group of people we have here. <laughs> I am by. I call, call me jaded. You I don't like Gallops. Seth hates the number of the beast with a passion. <laughs> Snyder, who, who Fine, you tossing? Fine, listen to somewhere in time. <laughs> <laughs> listen to Fear of the Dark, you spiky-haired turd. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Snyder, who who are you tossing off? It's such a hard call, but I got to toss Metallica. Oh. They did a lot, but Up yours, BJ. We used to be friends, man. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love Metallica, but I mean, just the other three bands, God, I mean, you can't throw Pantera off there. I mean, Bruce Dickinson has the golden voice. So right. You can't throw hey, Murray's guitar. There. Hey, Bruce yeah, Dickinson can fly a plane. Name one album that Black Sabbath did that beats Metallica's Kill Em All. Oh, easy. Headless Cross. That's a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dorsey, Dorsey picks a Dio album. That's not Dio. That's Tony Martin. You know what? Okay. When was the last time they picked a fretless bass and did awesome? Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Lawrence Cottle, I know you're out there. <laughs> Snyder, thanks for calling in, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Have a good night, guys. And I'm, glad, safe, I'm glad you tuned in. Good night. Later. <laughs> All right, we are in the studio with Dead Horse Trauma. We got Seth and BJ. And do you guys, do you guys have any um, upcoming shows around here, or how, do you guys want to do a little, <laughs> little band plug for yourselves here? Oh, certainly. Um, next Friday night, May twenty fourth. Yep, yep, yep. We are at Woolies here in Des Moines. Yes, for the final Mind Right show. That's going to be killer. That's going to be us, Mind Right. Index case. Index case, as for you, and Marcado. The return of Marcado, yeah. Excellent. So that should be a good show. And then the very next night, we're actually uh, at Iowa Rock Fest. Never heard of that. It's, uh, I think Boba Flex is a headliner Friday night, and then we're on with Stabbing Westward. Or not Stabbing, The Dreaming, formerly Stabbing AKA. Westward. Okay. <laughs> Where is Iowa Rock Fest? What city? Fort, Fort Madison. Madison. Okay. Some rodeo fairgrounds, something or other. So it's a local music festival. Like, uh, a, is it mostly local? They music? have, the, yeah, it's mostly local. They got, they brought in a few nationals to come in and, and top off the nights. You know, really make people's ticket money worth it. But sure. yeah, we're happy to be a part of that. There's a radio station down there, KQ92, that that helps us out a lot, and they're putting that on. So very awesome. generous. And you guys have a website information and that uh, kind of thing. Facebook. Twitter, MySpace, what a, we have a dot com too, deadhorsetrauma.com, facebook.com backslash deadhorsetrauma. Um, we have a YouTube channel. That we do. Are hey, you guys just, on LinkedIn? Just, just, <laughs> I am, but. Yeah. I don't think I'm, I don't <laughs> think I'm linked. To you anything. can't link in to Dead That's Horse the trauma. Facebook for resumes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you what, you guys have been great. It's been, it's been fun having you in the studio. It's been probably the fastest hour we've had, you know, in, in the Bigfoot Diaries webcast yeah. one studios um so i'd like to thank you guys for coming in for sure oh, no, thank Thanks. you guys for um, having us man. it's been a good time we'd love to come back again it was well yeah I like, I like to have you guys back we'll again. do an acoustic for you yeah. we'll write a ballad per se will you no, no problem. we won't there will we'll never, never, ever, ever, there will, ever ever do it that. would be two acoustic guitars before it would ever be an acoustic bass we, we could launch like an indiegogo or a kickstarter and get oh, that yeah, thing yeah, recorded yeah. kickstarter <laughs> we need a thousand dollars and we'll do an acoustic song <laughs> kickstarter.com yikes and he's gonna off his wife we've got plans for how we're gonna make our third and fourth and fifth million million dollars so kickstarter (laughs) indiegogo all those someone said something about killing their wife (laughs) okay i'm sorry that was a stab at as i lay down i'm sorry i had to get it out there well i want to i want to thank you guys for coming in i want to thank grant and dr evil for making it um sebekian wherever you are i hope hope you're safe um shep i hope you get to feel them better like to thank daydreams for being a proud sponsor um tom bolin and arwick's hand screen printing the Ritual Cafe, Magnus Seligrin at Seligrin Design, Art is the Enemy, and Jeremiah at Brolesha Records. I'd like to thank all those guys for their support. Side and, note, um, Tom Bolin was my high school art teacher. What's up, buddy? <laughs> nice. Tom Bolin, the, oh, yeah, really? Yeah. Small well, world. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that he was even that old, so. Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now you're, it's, it's almost like you're calling Seth old there for a minute. No, no, Maybe. I'm young because uh, I, right, right. I was a student. What year, though? 
Um, we're not going to get in. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, I would like to thank you guys for coming in. Thank everybody. Um, if you want to send us a demo or a CD, a CD to be reviewed, you can send it to P.O. Box 1805, Des Moines, Iowa, 50305. Our next show will be June 23rd, and Tom Bolin will be our guest. Huh? And uh, we're going to have the musical guest, King of the Tramps, in the studio. Um, also, guys I went to high school with. Nice. Yeah. Those guys are great, man. Yeah. I got their very, new CD. Very it's fantastic. Good. Very, very um, good. Jeff Banks, if you're watching, um, we'll get you next time. And I'd like to thank you for watching the Bigfoot Diaries live. And we'll see you next month. Thanks. Toodles. Keep on rocking. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Well, good morning. This is the 7th of June in the Lord's year 2010, and this is day uno, one, uh, webcast1live.com. We will begin with Max World Live with my special guest, Tom Coates, in just a minute. There's Tom. Wait. Howdy. And uh, we will be live for the very first time on Webcast One Live. this and say gosh remember that old day in history wonder where walter cronkite was he must have been around hanging there too but actually it's the beginning of webcast one live and thank you for listening thanks rob spearman and everybody who's put together this project together and uh, we're ready to go live now so thanks for listening to maxworldlive.com I can't tell you that it's going real well from time to time, but it is going. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. Well, hi, I'm Rob Spearman. I'm a broker owner of Remax Real Estate Concepts in Des Moines, Iowa. Give us a call if you're looking at buying or selling a home, or if you're having trouble on your mortgage payments or looking to purchase foreclosures, we have the agents to help you, experienced, outstanding agents. Our office number is 515-276-2872. Or if you'd like to look at homes, go to our website, homeconnectusa.com. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live.